Over 103 years ago, the first smoke wafted out of the 585-foot anaconda smelting stack behind me, which was, and is still, the tallest freestanding masonry structure in the world. It's so large that the entire Washington Monument could fit snugly inside. 10,000 trees were used just to provide the scaffolding to build the 585-foot chimney out of 33,060 tons of brick and mortar. Built in six months in 1918, it was used by the Anaconda Copper Company for over 60 years. But why is this enormous chimney standing here in western Montana? Well, that's because it supported the mining and smelting of copper and other metals on what was known as the richest hill on earth, which would yield over 18 million pounds of copper over its lifetime here outside of Butte, Montana. The stack replaced a 300-foot stack built in 1902. At 300 feet, it wasn't tall enough to prevent the 20 tons of arsenic emitted each day from settling in the surrounding farmland, and within the first year of operation, the Anaconda Company was facing a lawsuit from local ranches and farmers for killing off their crops and livestock. Rather than clean up the output, the company's solution was to build another stack almost twice as high, which would release the toxins higher into the atmosphere, thus spreading out the pollution. This coincided with technological development using electrified chains to capture what was now around 75 tons of arsenic dust a day. The system was less than 50% effective at first and got better with time. This captured arsenic was used to treat railroad ties. Besides copper, zinc, beryllium, ferromanganese, and phosphate were processed here. The beryllium plant was especially hazardous. The entire plant had to be hosed down due to the toxicity of the dust, which was the consistency of powdered sugar and easily sent airborne, creating a deadly cloud. A fog mist room was required to wash the dust from the special nylon suits that the workers wore. Besides toxic material, workers remember the intense noise, darkness, heat, and hazardous exposure. Some would take naps on sacks filled with asbestos before it was known how dangerous it was. Others recall incidents of workers being maimed or killed by machinery. Despite all the risks, though, the money was good and provided for almost every resident of town in some way, particularly the drinking establishments, of which there was reportedly dozens. Whether you had a taste for booze or not, the reality is that thousands were employed here, from immigrants to locals, illiterate to educated, and everyone in between, so long as you were willing to work hard. The mine operated until 1980, feeding the smelter ore until a drop in the price of copper left it economically untenable. The smelter closed in 1981 and was demolished, with the exception of the smokestack, which residents petitioned to save. With the closure of the mine and smelter, thousands were left without work, and the area around the stack is completely closed to the public due to hazardous levels of arsenic, lead, cadmium, and zinc. The area is now the country's largest EPA Superfund site. Check out this playlist for more interesting videos. Thank you to my Patreon subscribers for helping me get to these locations. And as always, until next time, get lost.